Podcast. Every kid has a story how they grew up and where they came from, right? I grew up in a basic middle class neighborhood. I walked to school. I didn't get a ride to school. I walked in the snow both ways uphill. Yeah, I, I'm from Canada. So, um, no, I didn't uh, have anything different. Uh, but I discovered bodybuilding when I was 14, and that's where my life took a different change. And I did my first show at 16. It was a little gym contest in the gym. I was training at a gym in Calgary, Alberta called BJ's Gym. It was this power lifter. He lived above the gym. He was a fireman and he ran the gym. It was a power lifting place and he put up a poster saying contest and I was 16. I wanted to compete because I wanted to, right from the beginning, I wanted to be like Arnold. I played the same music for everyone. just kept hitting the, re the tape thing and, and I was wearing a Speedo bathing suit. I didn't have a tan and I copied Arnold's poses and did my thing and I placed third. That was my first show. And I competed every year after that, striving and worked up to the Alberta Championships and then the Western. It took me three times to win the Western Canadian Championships. I placed sixth two years in a row. Then I came back the third time, won the overall. And that's when I decided to move to the United States. When I decided to come to the United States, I told my mom, I said, I'm moving to California. And she says, when are you going? I said, Friday. And this was like Monday. She goes, you want me to pack you some food? I said, yeah, okay, that'd be cool. And backed up my car and left. Came here with nothing. I slept on the lifeguard stands in a sleeping bag down on Venice Beach and lived in my car. You weren't allowed to sleep in your car, so I had to go down to the beach because the police wouldn't let you sleep in your car. So I'd sit in my car and eat my meals and train at Gold's Gym in Venice, and then I'd go down at night to the beach, roll out my bag on the lifeguard stands, go to sleep, get up in the morning when the tractors are grading the sand, and you had to get up and go. I conned my way into a job down downtown L, Los Angeles at this little cafe called Gorky's Brewery and Cafe. I, I did security work. I got $700 a month, but they let me eat as much as I wanted. So uh, pretty much I only ate when I was there because I didn't have any money. And then $700 a month, that's it. And I was living in my car, sleeping on the beach, and then that's and then I finally got into a little studio apartment. So I was getting ready for the North American Championships, my third attempt. I placed second two years before. It was my turn, as all the magazines were talking, it was my turn. My wife, Sue Price at the time, she had just won the Nationals and turned pro on her fourth attempt. So we were the, the married couple, amateur couple, now turning pro. It was my turn to turn pro. Three months or two months before my show, I tear my pec right here. Really bad. I was benching 375 on the fifth rep and it popped. And I remember I went home and I was sitting on the floor and had ice on it. And I think I had a pizza in front of me because I'm like, screw it, you know. And she comes home and says, you know, what happened? I told her. So we talked about it and said, well, okay, what are we going to do? Drop out of the show or you, you do it, you go for it. So we just said, okay, we're going to go for it. I couldn't do anything. There's so many things you can't do in training when your pec is torn. Now, it wasn't a surgical tear, it's just really bad. Uh, you know, heavy tricep push downs I couldn't do, line extensions, this open military press I couldn't do all. So I said, or we decided basically, I have to be shredded because I'm not going to come in as big as I would have liked to have been because I couldn't train that way. You go after it, you persevere, you, you train around it, you never give up. So the, I talked to the judges afterwards and they said, Dave, we wanted to give you your pro card this year. It was your year, but you had to prove it, you had to earn it. And they told me afterwards, when I turned around to the back and they saw my conditioning, my glutes and my lower back and all that, said, Dave, we gave you your pro card. And that was it. So if I had decided not to do the show because of the injury, maybe the next year wouldn't have been my year. If you've never failed, you're never going to win. Because failure is what drives you to want to win. When I put someone in a show for their first time, I really hope they don't win because that'll ruin them. Because the next show, they're really gonna lose. Because they're gonna just think, well, look, I won my first show, I cruised through this, they're gonna get their asses beat the next time. So, 
secretly I want them to lose. I don't want them to maybe lose bad, yeah. but I don't want them to win. And then they'll come back and be hungry to win. So whatever it is you choose to do, like I said, you never give up. Yeah. Always go forward and go after what your dream is uh, and turn it into whatever you can turn it into. The, the work ethic to become great, even though I heard stories about Michael Jordan. They said he was a terrible basketball player at the beginning, but he worked harder than anybody else. And look what he became. I wanted a gym. People said, how did you know how to open a gym? I didn't. I'd never opened a gym before. You don't have to know how, you just have to want to do it. The want to do it will find the way. After a while, a couple of years of competing as a pro, you realize, okay, what am I going to do with this? Now we're in, I own a gym, but that's not the way it started. So first I had a nutrition store, a Nutrisport store. Had that for a while. That worked out okay for about six years, and I sold that. Then I went into uh, LA County Sheriff's Department. I was going to be a cop. So I went through the whole procedure, got hired, took a couple of years, the whole thing, went all the interviews and all that. I was in the academy, and I tore my hamstring. It's a running academy. You can't run when you got a torn hamstring. I tried limping through a week, and I couldn't do it, so I had to leave the academy. So I decided not to, and, and said, you know what, I've always wanted my own gym. It's time to do it. Well, the hardest part is raising the money. Well, how do you do that? Well, you talk to a lot of people. You go for a lot of lunches. You sell yourself, and you get a little bit here and a little bit there, and this and that. Okay, I can give you a couple grand. Okay, thanks, and I'll give you this back, and I'll, you know, so you find the money, credit cards and favors and loans and all this stuff, and you put it all together. And it took me a year, and the lease and the improvement, the build out, and the whole thing. And, and here we are. Now we're over four years in this location. I can't believe it. It's gone that fast. As far as what type of gym am I going to open, Dave Fisher? Well, I'm not going to open a Planet Fitness. I'm a hardcore guy. I came from BJ's Gym in Calgary, which is a uh, pictures of Conan on the wall and rock and roll and power lifters and and that's what I grew up I was a competitive bodybuilder I lift hard and heavy um, it was rock and roll and you know Judas Priest and Led Zeppelin and ACDC and that's that's where I came from lifting so that's who I am so my gym was always going to be that now is that the best business model to open for a gym no it's probably the worst business model. So, and 24-Hour Fitness and LA Fitness, all that, their business model's way better than mine. But that's not who I am, and I wouldn't be happy doing that. Like and when we're talking about the, the business model of a place like Planet Fitness, there's a guy in a suit and tie that owns it. The, they're a corporation, okay? My gym, I go out on the floor, someone's got a big squat, and I still get excited to see it. Come, someone comes out and says, Dave, can you put on whatever song they want to listen to? Yeah, okay, we'll put it on. He's got to do his big squat. We all go over, we watch it and video it and cheer it on. And that's, that's what my gym is. The corporate gyms, they don't do that. You know? The owner, there's no owner. There's a manager trying to make sales. The thinking behind the way I set up my gym is based on all the experience I've had in all my years of bodybuilding and being in different gyms and what works and what guys and girls in a gym want. I specifically searched out old plates because it has that old school feeling, so it wasn't easy to find, and I had to actually scrub and clean and get the rust off all of them when I find, found these old plates. So the gym is very clean, it's well put together, but it's got old plates, so it's got a touch of the old and the new, and it, all these little things give the gym the feel. When people come in, they say, wow, this is a gym like I grew up on or my first gym I went to. The back of my gym is the power section, so it has a feeling back there. When you go to the back of the gym where all the squat racks are lined up, the deadlift platforms, the benches, uh, the, the, the main bench, the one they use in competition is a Forza bench. I put it on a platform so it looks like a stage. It makes it feel right. I get up at 3 and go to the beach and do some stairs and cardio and then I get here sometimes around 4.30 and I like to come in the gym, turn on the music, leave the lights off, just kind of walk around my gym, listen to music, just kind of look at it, reflect upon it. And sometimes I still look at it and go, how, how the hell did I do this? And this is my gym. It's pretty cool. 
It's a good feeling.